So, you want to get into Monster Hunter World. Well, let me give you a couple pieces of advice. First things, get out while you can. Second thing, welcome to the grind fest. Monster Hunter World is based off of three primary mechanics. The first that ties the other two in is going to be the actual combat, the fighting of the monsters that is the main drag and purpose to play the game. The other two both work their way into this because basically you have general preparation as one where you're going to be going around the world well hunting these monsters and gathering any resource you can possibly get your hands on. Doesn't matter if anything's trying to stop you, you get those resources because you are gonna need them. And then the last mechanic is actually the creation of armor and weapons as well as items that will aid you in fighting bigger and better monsters. Because you're gonna start fighting tiny little guys that you don't gotta worry about, but by the time you reach endgame, you better have that armor made out of the electric squirrel so that then you can shake off electric attacks from the big old scary thing and you had better be dealing elemental damage to counter whatever they are throwing at you because you're given a 50 minute time limit in most quests and sometimes that just isn't enough. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, wow, that sounds really grindy. Well, it is. And that is honestly one of Monster Hunter's greatest strengths as well as one of its weaknesses. Monster Hunter World, as well as all of the Monster Hunter video games, in the best way possible is not meant for everyone. So if you're not huge on getting massive satisfaction for building up the perfect setup and then taking out something far above what you should be able to take out, then I would recommend you look elsewhere for a game. But if that's what you're looking for, this is where you get it. This is that guy on the street who may not have exactly what you're looking for, but if you're into some weird stuff, he's got it. That being said, Monster Hunter World is far more accessible than previous iterations of the Monster Hunter series. This is mostly because up until now they've basically been running off of more of a handheld platform, where with each game they basically extend and expand the mechanic list, as well as armor list, as well as monster list, and pretty much everything to the point of being so overcomplicated that you basically get Monster Hunter Generations, where there is just so much stuff for each of the weapon types there are th Ah, crap, how many weapons... Hey Google! How many are... How many weapon styles are there? One, two, three, four, five, six... Uh, six. There are, uh, six weapon styles per weapon. And there are 12 weapons. So basically, when they decided to make Monster Hunter World, which would be their first console release in quite a while, they decided to make it as accessible as possible without losing the spirit of Monster Hunter. So they took everything, they cut it back like crazy, they put it on a new engine, they rebuilt everything from the ground up, and it is still awesome Monster Hunter. But it's also quite a bit easier to get into than more than a lot of the handheld versions of the game. So you're gonna start out, you're gonna make your character, you're gonna make your character as beautiful or awesome looking as you want him to be, like my awesome character boss man, or boss ma'am, depending. And you're gonna get in, you are going to take a few quests that will be really, really easy, will involve you wandering around the brand new maps, picking up herbs slash herbs, depending on where you live and hunting very, very small monsters while trying to avoid the much larger monsters. This is a great time to be playing around with the different weapons, because as I said, there are a lot of them, uh, ranging from the deceptively complicated to the not deceptively overly complicated. Then you get it, your first hunt quest. You go out there and you fight the great Jaegerus. Basically, the Great Jagras is uh, he's, he's a bit of a pushover, but he is good experience starting out. So won't be much of a challenge, weak to pretty much everything, just go kill him. Once you're done with him, you are in the thick of it, buddy. Basically, you are given one monster after a next. Once you kill one, another one pops up, so you're going to find yourself in a routine pretty quickly. You're going to find yourself going out, doing quests, picking up as much 
items as possible. You're going to be mining every ore cropping you can possibly get your hands on for those sweet, sweet upgrades. There's three things you want to keep track of while doing this. The, these three things... <laughs> these three things basically are going to help you massively and don't actually cost a lot of resources. The first is you're going to want to eat before every quest. They can give you more complex boosts along with the meal, but mostly they'll give you extra stamina and health. You're going to want to make sure to top off on healing potions whenever possible, and then most, most importantly, always pet the pookie. As soon as you have built up the equipment and the items that you think are necessary, you will take on that monster, you will get knocked out, and then you are gonna keep going over and over again back at the monster until either you have no money left or the monster has no life left. Once that is taken care of, you will know their movesets like the back of your hand. If they even flinch, you know that a double spin backflip is going to occur that will set you on fire and you are going to be two centimeters out of range so you can get in with a shoulder slam to then power up your great sword so then you can hit it right at its weak spot for maximum damage. Fun little fact on that note, in Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, one of the largest Monster Hunter games to date, as well as possibly one of the hardest Monster Hunter games to date, with just massive amounts of content, it actually has a quest in there to fight a giant enemy crab that is called Giant Enemy Crab. And now you are in the section that I like to refer to as the Monster Pity Fest, where basically, you are going to be killing this monster over and over and over again because you need that one item to either finish off your chest piece or to upgrade your weapon to the next tier so that then you can move on to the next monster. You're going to enjoy every second of it because there is something absolutely satisfying about taking on a monster that once knocked you down so badly and just kicking its face in. But Monster Hunter has the ultimate mechanic that is not a mechanic, which we know as the desire sensor. Basically, you want something, the game knows you want something, and it doesn't matter what statistics are put up online, that item will not come at that rate. You will kill the monster over and over and over again, and you will not get the one freaking item that you're trying to how hard is it to get a gem? How? How hard? But through this, you are going to be in the classic Monster Hunter scene that is honestly very similar to games like Stardew Valley or Harvest Moon, where it is a day-to-day -day routine, where basically, instead of having days, you are going to be structuring your time around the hunting of this one specific or monster that is just going to be brutally hunted each and every single day. Because you're going to start out your day, you're going to get out of your bed, you're going to go, you're going to get something to eat, you're going to accept the quest, you're going to make sure you're topped up on potions, you're going to pet your poogie, and then you're going to go out, you're going to hunt the monster, you're going to kill the monster, you're going to come back, you're going to check, you don't have the item. So you're going to get something to eat, you're going to accept the quest, you're going to make sure you're topped up on potions, don't forget to pet the poogie. And then you're going to head out, you're going to kill the monster even quicker this time, even though it says that it's a bigger monster. And then you're gonna come back, you're gonna realize I don't have it, and then you're gonna accept the quest, you're gonna get some food, you're gonna get check your health potions, you're gonna pet the poogie, and then you're gonna head out, and you're gonna get back, and then you're gonna eat, and then you're gonna accept the quest, and then you're gonna check your potions, and then you're gonna pet the poogie, and then you're gonna head out, and then you're gonna come back, and then you're gonna accept the quest, and then you're gonna eat, and then the poogie, and then all the crap you forgot about the potions, but you're gonna head out, and you're gonna kill it, and you're gonna come back, and then you're gonna check your quest, and you're gonna get the food, and then you boogie 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 boogie. And then why do I even enjoy this game? What is happening? How have I spent so much time in this game? This is total BS. I don't understand why anyone would ever want to play this. Oh. 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 Yes. Yes. This is the best game ever. 10 out of 10. Never going to play anything else ever again. This is awesome. Oh, a new monster.